Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Mayor and City Council of Laurel, Maryland on May 13th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilman DeWatt. Councilwoman Johnson. Here. Councilman Mills. Here. Councilwoman Clark. Here. President Cole. Here. Mayor Sidnor. Here. You have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Agenda item number three is the report of the Mayor and City Council. I will start with Mr. DeWalt. Ms. Green, is Mr. DeWalt with us tonight? Sorry, he's not on the meeting. All right, we will move on to uh, Council Member Clark. Thank you, President Cole. Uh, since our April 22nd meeting, I've had the pleasure of doing the following attending multiple city budget review meetings, which is a priority for us, uh, which city staff has answered questions that I desired uh, clarity on during our budget process. Thank you to each staff member for their time and careful planning during this budget process. Uh, in addition, I met with uh, the Zeta Phi Beta Maryland chapter sorority to, to discuss an upcoming community event uh, to include Laurel residents. Also congratulations to all, employ all city of Laurel employees who received awards on Friday. Each of you play a crucial role in maintaining the functionality, efficiency, and overall well being of our Laurel community. From public safety officers to administrative staff, your contributions to the city of Laurel never goes unnoticed, and we appreciate the hard work and dedication of each employee. I also attended music at the mansion, which had an outstanding band, and the mansion was decorated so nicely for their first public open house on Saturday. Uh, it was also great seeing everyone at the Main Street Festival this weekend. It's always a great reminder of what a close-knit community we are, from the many hugs that I saw in the streets, to the neighbors greeting other neighbors and external residents complimenting on how amazing our community is. I enjoyed spending time greeting visitors and residents side by side with the Juneteenth Committee at the vendor table. As a reminder, don't forget to add this to your calendar. The City of Laurel Juneteenth Committee will be hosting Freedom Day, a celebration of Juneteenth with residents and friends from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Granville Goody Park, directly across from the Laurel Town Center. If you're interested in being a vendor at this event or showcasing your talent, please email laurelcityjuneteenth at gmail.com. Last time I report, I believe that it's so important um, to connect with other municipalities, elected officials, and residents uh, to enhance the viability of the city of Laurel. I am honored to announce that I was appointed to the National League of Cities, National Black Caucus of Elected Officials Committee. Uh, thank you to the National League of Cities, and I look forward to proudly representing the city of Laurel during our outreach and networking opportunities. Thank you, Council uh, Member Cole. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Council Member Mills. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good evening, everyone. I uh, had the pleasures of um, having uh since april 24th had the arbor day event uh attended the arbor day event and that was held at the marcus colbert, colbert uh, community field and uh, we planted trees and um since that day there are probably over 100 trees planted in that community now and um since uh, april 27th um at the laurel library uh, Martin Mitchell had a uh, um, was there at the expungement clinic uh, April 27th, and uh, that was pretty. That was pretty. That went pretty well as well. Uh, April 29th, um, we had the um, the fair for fair housing summit, and that was held at the municipal building, and uh, pretty interesting about that as well. Um, trying to learn more about the fair housing and understanding more about it how how that that fair part works uh i have some concern about that um may 3rd i uh, was at the career day at vansville elementary school and i talked to probably about 10 classrooms that day we had a great day that day and i uh, shared a whole lot of gifts on that day as well something to something for them to remember may 4th 
at the Lake Fest at the Goody Park. Um, that was um, that it was it, it rained, but it did not stop. It didn't stop people from coming out. And uh, we put our umbrellas up, put our raincoats on, and we had a heck of a time. Kids were still out there playing, had a lot of uh, animals that you can pet. Uh, and uh, it was it was, it was was a good time. Uh, um, I saw some young ladies climbing the wall, and they were way up there on that wall. And I was surprised, like, wow, you know. It would take me a little more encouragement to get up on that hill, on that wall, though. Uh, May 8th. I was at the, and I'm very proud to uh, announce this. I was at Virginia Tech uh, for the donning of the Kenty cloth. Uh, my daughter, I, Jatia, she became Dr. Mills. She's the uh, first to become a doctor in my family. So I'm very proud of her and hope she goes far, far in her career uh, at NIH. Um, May 10th, there was a ribbon cutting up um, at the Walmart. And they were pumped up at that Walmart. Lord have mercy. Yeah, and I um nowhere else can you take a picture with with Tony the Tiger and the next Lee Quick Rapid. Okay, <laughs> we we had a great time. We had a great time. And uh, last last but not least, the uh, main Main Street Festival. Uh, that was that was that was a great day. I'm so glad that we had a successful day. Perfect weather. I mean, everybody was out. There were cars parked everywhere. So, you know, a lot of people know about the Main Street Festival. You've seen a lot of people walking down the street with a turkey leg in their hand. So, proud of the lower board of trade. Wish them much more success and let's keep it going. This was my first year uh, being in the front of the line instead of the back of the line with, with my trucks and everything. So, Main Street Festival, that was my, my last event. And uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Councilwoman Johnson. Good evening, everyone. Just to um, briefly share my report, I think some of um, what I've gone through this um, since the last meeting has been echoed by some of my other council members, but I will touch on a couple briefly. Like um, Council Member Clark mentioned, it was great to review the budget with the staff. So we do appreciate them taking the time to do that. This was the first time, you know, looking at a comprehensive budget. So it was nice that they were able to provide that assistance and guidance. So appreciate that. On May 3rd, I had the privilege of attending the grand opening of the Mist Lounge on um, Main Street with the mayor. So it was nice to see the new businesses opening up on Main Street. On Saturday, May 4th, I didn't go out and brave the rain. I stayed inside, but Peace on Patuxent hosted a high noon tea fundraiser for their um, organization, the Respite Cancer Home. And Ms. Hill, the um, organization's founder, wanted me to make sure that I share the thank you, um, sincere and great, grateful thank you to the mayor and the city council for assistance with the event, you know, providing the venue and all the assistance she needed with getting that I'm taken care of. So she sends her thanks. On Wednesday, May the 8th, had the opportunity to attend one of the Homeowners Association meetings, also with the mayor and chief um, of police. So that was interesting. It's always a good, good to hear what the residents have to say and hear how you know, we respond and how we take care of those requests. So I like to attend those type of events. And like Councilman Mills mentioned, like Friday, May 10th was very, very busy. So the reopening for the remodel of Walmart was so, so exciting. <laughs> um, fun to take pictures with those, um, the characters. I think we had most fun doing that and dancing. But to also note during that event, two of our local organizations did receive community grants. So it was good to see that Walmart um, highlighted those organizations. And we also heard from a former student, a high school and middle school student of Laurel City. He has products. We got some chicken fry and some fish fry, but he has his local products, scratch products in the Walmart store. So it was just a proud moment for us as um, residents to see that and help support him. Um, also on the 10th, I attended the employee award ceremony. It was good to be back with the employees of the city and also attended the music at the mansion that evening. And lastly, the um, Main Street Festival was great to be in the parade, see everybody, and the weather was perfect. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. A lot of the stuff, as Ms. Johnson said, we've all been at together, so I, I will keep it brief. 
Um, on April 25th, I participated in the Laurel Resist question and answer session. Once a month, Laurel Resist meets to talk about different topics, uh, whether it's national, state, or local. And they encourage uh, local elected officials to come in and, and answer questions for them. On April 26th, I helped the 4th of July yard sale committee set up in uh, the multi-service center for their 4th of July fundraiser on the 27th. Also on the 27th, I presented the mayor's proclamation to Sister Karen Lester for her retirement after 64 years of service at St. Vincent Pilate High School. Ms. Lester started her career very early at the age of 16, and after a life of dedication to the school, she's finally retiring and will be greatly missed. On April 30th, I attended the Lars fundraiser at Blaze Pizza. On April or on May 2nd, I went to the opening of the farmers market. For those that are have not heard, the farmers market is now weekly with lots of good vendors, fresh produce, and some amazing corn that's brought in uh, because it's not quite in season yet. So if you're looking for corn to go with your crabs, they have it at the farmer's market. Um, on May 3rd, I attended the celebration for emeritus status for Pops Grant at the Laurel Volunteer Fire Department, Company 10. Also on May 3rd, I attended the Ride for the Fallen open house uh, across from City Hall. They have their office there. Um, on the first Friday of every month, they host an open house for those that would like to join. So if you have a motorcycle and want to help benefit fallen veterans, please consider checking out Ride for the Fallen. Their next event is in June. Um, on May 4th, I attended Lake Fest, like Councilman Mills said, there was a lot of rain. It was a lot of fun going out. I was the first to take out the paddle boats and open the concession stand. So the Parks and Rec, they are rain or shine. We appreciate all that they do for the city. On May 5th, I attended the Laurel Volunteer Fire Department Ladies Auxiliary uh, Breakfast, another good fundraiser here in the city. Um, again, Parks and Rec was at it. We've heard the music at the mansion was also in the rain. They have an upcoming event next Saturday. Rain is in the forecast. Mr. Bailey, I think you're gonna to have to call down to NOAA and ask them for some good weather for some of your events. But please come out, Parks and Rec puts on a lot of hard work to make these happen, whether it's raining or not. Um, finally, I wanna give my condolences to the family of Dr. Glenn Knight Sr. on his passing on April 23rd. Dr. Knight uh, held his ministry. He was a, a pastor here in the DMV for over 70 years. Um, so condolences to his family. That concludes my report. We will move on to Mayor Sidnor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and good evening, everyone. Um, on April 24th, April 27th, I attend a conference in Atlanta, always continue training and learning how to be an efficient mayor for our city. So that conference in Atlanta held by mayors throughout the country, networking and learning new information. So it was a very informative conference. So thank the city for allowing me to go there as well. On April 29th, I had the housing summit here, um, Fair Housing Summit, April 29th. We had uh, Prince George County Department of Housing there. Also had the Maryland Department of Community Development there to assist us in communicating and getting our information out to our public. On May the 1st, I attended another meeting with the Metropolitan Washington Council of Government. Uh, that meeting was uh, held at, uh, in Washington, D.C. It's always held in Washington, D.C. when um, Northern Virginia, Prince George County, uh, Montgomery County, St. Charles County, all come together to talk about regional issues in our community and the big issues about the metro. And May the third was Career Day at the following elementary schools. I attend Bond Mill Elementary School for Career Day as well, and Vanville um, Elementary School. And that later on that day, I attended a um, Lord Volunteer at the, um, for recognition of Robert Grant celebration for him for his distinguished service with the fire department. And also another new business open up on Main Street, Miss Lounge, um, grand opening, this hookah lounge. So if you went to hookah, uh, try, try them out. And also attended a RAF for the following uh, um, veterans organization by Council President said, uh, to open house every uh, once a month on Friday. So um, if you're interested in learning about the following soldiers, um, please visit there. Then on May the 4th, as you mentioned before, Lake Fest at Grand Gagudi Park, want to um, recognize park and recreation again, like we always did. Um, all our city employees uh, work very hard, to get information out and put on activities for our city, and we thank you for that much. And I attended, later on that night, I attended a worship service at Blue uh, at the Apostle Worship Service, 17th anniversary, uh, recognizing them. Someone invited me there, so uh, I attended church there. Then on May the 5th, uh, Tabnop Church, uh, Tabnop International World Day Church, it was a very informative service. They had uh, different flags from different countries, all the 
different um, uh, parishioners go to that church there. So very good informative service as well. This is uh, important right here. World Ebony Network, they're an organization to help individuals in our city with taxes. They are certified by the IRS. The IRS was there to welcome those individuals that got certified to uh, do taxes for our citizens here in the city. So uh, if you are uh, having tax problems and you need someone to do your taxes, World Ebony Network will help you out with those taxes. They are certified by the IRS. So um, you should be uh, confident and um, safe with them doing your taxes. Uh, May the 7th, attend the Laurel High School Senior Award Ceremony. Uh, the Mayor Award went to a senior named Shauna, Shauna Thompson. Congratulations, Shauna Thompson, for receiving the Mayor Award. Uh, May the 8th, once again, we are uh, uh, HOA meeting the Board of Wellingtons. Um, we had a lot of questions there. Uh, Chief Police was there along with Councilman Johnson. Uh, I think we answered most of their questions, and so they was pretty happy with the uh, information that we are uh, um, giving them as well. And like I said, a grand opening of Walmart, like I said, more like a day party there. It was very uh, energized, a uh, grand opening. So I think uh, Walmart for inviting us out there, and they said they want to do some community service with us as well. So looking forward to an uh, ongoing relationship with Walmart there. And a congratulations to all the employees who received an award uh, on May the 10th. Once again, we all, all of you guys work very hard, not guys, all the ladies who work very hard. We're very grateful for your service. We cannot do our job without you all, so we want to thank you and uh, continue the wonderful work that you're doing for our city. And thank again, Lower Board of Trades for another outstanding Main Street Festival. I think the weather played on our side. People wanted to get outside the whole weekend. They came out. I just hope folks will continue to uh, come to our Main Street and um, recognize those businesses on Main Street, our small business. Main Street is small business of America. Every city and municipality has a Main Street. And our job is try to encourage folks to come to Main Street and get business incentives to come to Main Street and do business there. So. Hopefully the citizens recognize that and continue to support the small business on Main Street. So once again, thank Lower Board of Trades for all you do and continue you know, another 44 years next year. That clear my report, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, no, Mr. Sorry, I got some announcements. Sorry. Sure. Go ahead. I keep forgetting about the announcements. Uh, May the 18th, we got the Lower Helping Hands, the Mental Health Awareness, um, the Multi-Service Center. It's going to be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Once again, Lower Helping Hands, Mental Health Awareness Month. And as you know, May is Mental Health Month, and so we want to recognize those individuals, recognize folks that get the resources if you suffer from any type of depression or anxiety. Whatever you're going through, we're asking you to uh, come out there and learn some information on from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the 204 Fort Meade Road at the Craig A. Moe Multi-Service Multi Center. So please come out there. Kids the Park Day is going to be there at the Lower Lakes uh, Goody Park. So uh, come out there with your kids today. Park and Rex probably have some stuff planned out there for us as well. And then we have the uh, Tennis Fun Day at Alice McCullum Field at 3.45 to 6 p.m. Move with the Mayor. That's a campaign. A move with the Mayor throughout the United States. The City of Lawrence participate in that campaign. And the whole purpose is to get you out there moving, you know, if you have any type of depression, anxiety, anything like that, just come out there, have some fun. And get your mind off of, uh, don't suffer what he said, suffer in silence. So we want you to move with us and uh, recognize those type of things. And um, May 26th is going to be... Uh, Trump Memorial Day service to Ivory Hill from 10, 8, 10, 30 a.m. to 11, 30 a.m. Ivory Hill Cemetery. And of course, on May 27th, Memorial Day, so we close. City offices are closed all day long. So thank you, Mr. President. I'm finishing it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving on. Item number Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Councilwoman Clark? Yes. Councilwoman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. President Cole? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item number five is general public hearing. I will open the general public hearing at 619 p.m. We do have one resident signed up to speak. Madam Clerk, is the resident on the line? 
Yes, uh, Miss Eiffel is on. Let me, um, I'll go ahead and allow her to speak now. Thank you very much. Welcome back, Ms. Ifill. If, as a reminder, if you could please state your name and address for the record, and you have a two minute time limit starting at the end of uh, stating your address. The floor is yours. Georgina Ifill, 8231 North Lake Court, Laurel, Maryland. Um, I would like to propose this evening uh, that we go back to, or possibly go back to three minute time frame instead of the two minute time frame. I'm not sure why you ran well past 7 p.m., uh, but since I've been attending the meetings, I've noticed that it's only been very few individuals. But again, that would allow more time to actually be able to express a thought. So um, I would like to make that proposal, and I'm hoping that the um, council will take that under consideration. Thank you, Ms. Eiffel. You still have some time left. Is there anything else for this public hearing? If not, you're signed up again on agenda item number seven. Yes, I, I'm not, nothing more on this topic, General Fulton. Thank you very much, Ms. Eiffel. Madam Clerk, is there anyone else signed up to speak? I know we had one, but I did not see them on the line. Hi, Mr. President, that's it. If no one else signed up to speak, I will close the general hearing at 6.22 p.m. Agenda item number six is a bid recommendation for Carroll Avenue Street Improvement Project, LA 24-001, Department of Public Works. Mr. Tommy Helms, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor Sidnor, Council President Cole, and Laurel City Council members. The Department of Public Works is requesting approval to proceed with the construction project, LA 24-001, Carroll Avenue Street Improvement Project. This project includes the construction and repair of concrete sidewalk, pedestrian ramps, concrete curbing, pedestrian cro crossing with signalization, raised crosswalk and asphalt repair work, as well as resurfacing on Carroll Avenue from 7th Street Easterly to Washington Boulevard, US Route 1 for its entire length in the city of Laurel, Maryland. At a sealed bid opening at 2 p.m. April 10th, 2024, the city received a total of six bids for this contract. The bids received from low to high were as follows. Superior Facilities Management Services, LLC, bid withdrawal was $136,322.20. Espina Paving Incorporated, $190,899.30. BNR Services, Inc., $200,465. Francis O. Day Company Incorporated, $228,174. Ross Contracting Incorporated, $261,432. Metro Paving Incorporated, $290,888. Funding for this project is provided from FY24 Capital Improvement Project, Carroll Avenue Improvements. It is recommended that the Mayor and City Council of Laurel award the subject contract to Espina Paving Incorporated, a certified disadvantaged business enterprise, my minority business enterprise, small business enterprise out of Woodbridge, Virginia for the low bid of $190,899.30, with an additional $19,089.93 as contingency for a total of $216,257. Dollars and thirty cents. Espina Paving Incorporated has completed previous projects for the city. Should you have any questions or desire further information, please contact Timothy Miller at 301 725 008, extension 3208. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Helms. This bid recommendation was on last week's uh, Marin City Council work session. Are there any new questions or comments from the council? If not, I will entertain a motion. Mr. President, I would like to move that we approve to proceed with awarding the contract to Espina Paving for a total of $216,257.30 to make multiple repairs on Carroll Avenue from 7th Street Easterly to Washington Boulevard. Thank you. I have a motion and do I have a second? I'll second, Mr. Mr. President. Thank you. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? 
Council Park? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. Councilwoman Johnson? Yes. President Cole? Madam Clerk, I live on Carroll Avenue. I will abstain tonight. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item number seven, introduction and first public hearing on ordinance number 2026, an ordinance adopting the general operating budget and capital improvement program of the mayor and city council of Laurel, Maryland for the fiscal year July 1, 2024 through June 30th, 2025 and to levy property taxes and authorize the collection of such taxes. Director Saylor, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd first like to begin by thanking the Mayor's Budget Committee of uh, Ms. Navarro, Ms. Klinger, Ms. Barr, Ms. Pulley, and um, I, I have to give a special thank you to Ms. Woods. She works with me here in Budget and Personnel Services, and uh, we work very closely. She works very hard on the salary budgets for all the full-time employees, um, and uh, we spend a lot of time internally with you know, various levels of meetings. I'd also like to thank the members of the departments and their budget staff for their uh, input and the work that they do on the document. Uh, Ms. Kubek, who works on the document for us, and the director of IT, Mr. Cornwell Scheel, who uh, helped us out of a jam with the document as well. Uh, nothing's ever easy, so he helped us uh, pull this together. And um, so Ordinance 2026 is the encapsulation of the budget that we've been discussing over the last two weeks. Um, it's a $43,297,245 in the general operating budget. It is balanced uh, with a real estate tax rate of 71 cents per hundred, the uh, special overlay area of an additional three cents per hundred, and the personal property tax rate for the business tax is $1.69 per hundred. This budget provides to continue all city services. The uh, provides for supplies and equipment for employees to perform those services, as well as it honors the CBA agreements that we'll have with uh, that we have currently uh, with the FOP and we'll have with the Department of Public Works, providing for starting pay of uh, 35 hour employees of $42,315 a 40-hour employee, $41,330, and the starting pay for a police officer will be $62,566. Also in the ordinance is the Capital Improvement Program, which we've also discussed and gone over. It's a reauthorization of funds of $25,348,182, and new project funding of $4,769,604. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Director Saylor. I will- Oh, open... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. If I could just draw your attention, I apologize. On page two of the ordinance, the community promotion total should be $158,787. And the total in the Office of Emergency Management Department number 325 should be $728,452. Again, this doesn't change the bottom line. It, it represents exactly what we have previously discussed. The error was on my part. Thank you. Thank you, Director. I will open the general public hearing on ordinance number 2026 at 629 p.m. We have Ms. Ifill signed up again to speak. Madam Clerk, is Ms. Ifill available? Yes, I will unmute her now. Georgina Ifill, 8231 North Lake Court, Laurel, Maryland. Thank you. You're welcome. At the last council meeting, I had addressed on page 39 of the 23-24 budget, a line item in the amount of $15,000. Um, I questioned, it stated it was collective bargaining and I asked is that specifically DPW collective bargaining and I was told yes. 
Um, I was hoping with the proposed budget, I would see from what we budgeted, what was actually spent. Um, however, I'm noticing now that there is a different line item in this new budget. It's called Labor Council Service, and it's an amount of $25,000. Um, and it is being um, lumped in or grouped in with Epic Commission Council, which previously had a $7,500 budget, and it seemed like they did not spend that entire amount. Um, Again, I am curious because I saw changes in the line item. Previously, the collective bargaining was lumped in with, um, I think it was legislative, legislative fees, and it, the budget amount was 303. Uh, for some reason now, it's showing on this report, the budget amount was 296. So was there an amended budget some, somewhere in between the two? is a question that I'm asking. And um, and I guess the only way I find out the total amount for collective bargaining would be via a PIA, PIA. Because again, is this labor council service for collective bargaining? Is that something anyone can answer at this point in time? Thank you, Ms. Eiffel. This is general public hearing. The, uh, please ask your questions and the administration will get back to you in writing. Okay, so that, that that is my question. The change from the 303 down to 296 labor council service and the actual expenses for collective bargaining, which was originally on page 39 of the 23-24 budget. Thank you very much, Ms. Eiffel. You're welcome. With no one further signed up to speak at tonight's general public hearing on ordinance number 2026, I will close the general public hearing at 6.32 p.m. I will now open the floor to the council members. Everyone has had a chance to ask their questions in writing. Responses have been given back to the council members. Um, given some of the new documents that have come out, are there any new questions or comments from the council members? I will start with Ms. Johnson tonight. No, I don't have any additional questions at this time. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Councilwoman Clark. No additional questions. I just wanted to thank the staff for answering all of the questions that I did have um, and for ensuring that we will have additional uh, opportunities for uh, seniors and children as well as uh, additional uh, programs. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Councilmember Mills. Yes, I um I do have a question uh for direct director Seller. Um thank you, Mr. President. Um on the uh on the line item, um the revised budget, uh we I think that we just got the uh, what a capital improvement program. Uh the line is for the Craig A. Mo uh Laurel Multi Service Center, um seven hundred seventy-seven thousand four hundred thirty-four. I was just I was just wondering, you know, how do we get that number um with a building not you know not being used thus far? Yes, sir, Councilman Mills. The the 777-434 is the amount of funding remaining in the project at that point in time that we need you to reauthorize so we can continue on with the project. When we put the ordinance together, we have to just, you know, at a period in time, see what all the balances are of all the capital projects and, and put them into the ordinance so that these projects can keep moving along. That That is not operating funds. Those are par part of the renovation funds. Okay. It's now uh, there there was another line for the um, for the same um, facility. What? Uh, yes, sir. That was under the the new funding on page five. Okay, thank you. Yes, for the three million. Yes. So during the um, the recent general assembly session in Annapolis, we were awarded three million dollars. 
again for the renovations of the of the facility. Okay, so so that's new money, new money, if you will. Okay. But that that money is is that money. I just want to make clear because this is open to the public that yes. that that money is not money coming from our constituents. That money is coming from the state. Or it's federal. coming from the state of Maryland. Yes, the three million is coming from the state of Maryland. Okay. The, the seven seventy seven four thirty four is money we already have in hand um, from various sources. Okay. All right. When we say various sources, you know, somebody can run away with that. Can we? Can oh you... no, 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 no! It it came from city funds, other state funds from prior sessions of the general assembly in in 22 and 23 we also received funds oh okay so this was some some found money no it it, it came through the budget process it's just that i have to show it to you on the ordinance so that we can keep moving with the project we need you to as part of the or the adoption of ordinance 2026 i need you to reauthorize all these projects because the CIP doesn't stop at June 30. We need to keep moving. You know, nothing fits nice and neat between July 1 and June 30. So um, just officially, we need you to reauthorize those funds through the adoption of 2026, as well as the operating budget. All right. And do we have any idea as far as the operational uh, funding that will yes, go sir. towards this? And what, yes, sir. What, what on, on, page, on page two. To of the ordinance. Okay. Um, uh, About two thirds oh, of the way down yes. the page, it's yes. it's department number two nine four. Yes. For two hundred sixty two thousand three hundred seventy one dollars. Okay. And so that that that's kind of like a ideal ideal operation budget well so that's for the building maintenance. building maintenance that'll that 294 department has the utility budget to pay the utilities okay. um the um some of the other services you know uh exterminators oh, yeah. um you know and other equipment tables and chairs um and those things four lines down on department number 326. Yes. That's where we have 463,417. And that'll be the program budget. Okay. Okay. So well, that will that will have the staff time salaries and some of the other um, supply expenses to provide the services as far as the um helping with the the food pantry service um, and those types of supplies the laundry service uh paying for the um uh, the i'm sorry the barber and the the hairdresser uh and paying for other services where we could have folks in to teach how to go through a job interview and you know and help them along their way okay now, now to to kind of reduce these um, to reduce that programs that number there. Let me say, would it be possible because we're inviting other organizations to come in? You know, um, I mean, I, I know like Lars. Um, I mean, that's kind of like a almost like a catch twenty two. Like, whereas though we're inviting them in, but we also provide them with funding as well. So I was my question was like instead of instead of you know trying to find ways to reduce the the those funds, is it possible to have organizations that we are inviting to come in to to use this facility for them to pay to have these type of you know organizations? I mean like Lars is Lars is helping people with um housing and trying to uh, better better themselves. Well, you know, when you look good, you feel good. That that comes with barbering and hairstylists and so forth. So is that something that they could pay for? You know, other things. Well, I think, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think I, I, that they um, they'll be able to when we have the um, transitional housing, you know, their resources are going to be, you know, pretty well um, occupied in, in certain regards of helping those folks, you know, because they can only be there for up to six months. Um, so they'll have caseworkers. We've provided them with office space for the caseworkers. You know, there will be office space for the Veterans Affairs to come in and and folks can apply for their veterans benefits or Social Security. And um, so uh, maybe Ms. Barr can speak more to it, but I think our contribution was providing the facility, bringing all the resources together to, you know, help people give them a hand up. And yeah, I um, think when you go more. through uh, Ms. Cornwell's budget, the program budget, you'll see that. The, ma the majority of that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, of that budget will be compensation. That would be the salary for the center, um, the center director or the facility manager, the assistant facility manager, the front desk staff. So the individuals that will be in, um, that are coordinating the building and the use of the building. Um, and then you'll see things like office supplies, um, general supplies that are needed for day-to-day -day operations that we wouldn't necessarily be relying on volunteers to give us products. However, having said that, yes, we are always taking donations, donations for the um, the food pantry area, donations, you know, if, 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 if somebody wants to donate to us um, shampoo and and personal hygiene items, those types of things, uh, those will be items that we wouldn't have to then purchase to be able to give out to clients who are coming in. But yes, like the, the services upstairs for that Lars um, will be funding, the city will not be um, funding the staff who are going to be up um, working as caseworkers for the transitional housing or um, giving out sheets and towels. Those, those are, that is funding that will be coming through Lars. Um, the same with the kitchen area. Our partners at, at Fish, um, they will be bringing in the food that's gonna be distributed. They will be having their volunteers who are doing the cooking and distribution. So that's not something that the city is going to be paying for. Mainly what you're seeing are, are just general types of operational things, you know, papers, paper and pens and our copy machine and computer uh, supplies and just general general things like that to operate, to keep the building operating that we know we're not going to necessarily get um, volunteer donations for. Okay, but with, 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 this, with this line saying programs, my, my only concern is I'm, I'm wishing to try to find I have two organizations that I'm trying to find money for, Laurel, the uh, Laurel Cats and the and the Boys and Girls Club, and so I'm just trying to, uh, you know, s squeeze a dime out of a dollar here, you know, to to try to help and facilitate these two organizations any way which way we possibly can. So I'm just asking these questions for us yeah. to, you know, Mr. be Mills, proactive. Uh, Mr. Mills, the mayor has his hand up, but we'll move over to him for a second. I'll come back to you. Thank yeah. you. And Mr. Mills, I think um, the CIP, but I can explain it to you more. So like uh, Dr. Sales said, that's the money is already authorized. And if we don't spend that money, that money got to get carried over. So we got to authorize it back into this fiscal year budget. Um, once the budget, this is the budget. Um, we look at the budget. We get you opportunity to review the budget. Um, this is the budget. This is the first public hearing on the budget. This is the set budget right now. Um, then the second hearing would be um, the, the, well, the second Monday this month that we vote on the budget. So there's two public hearings vote on the budget, and this is the budget we have. So now no money will be squeezed out anywhere else. This is what the budget that we have. And so when you vote on it, you'll vote on it either yes or you vote no. Um, this is the budget that we submitted to the council. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Mayor. Anything else, Mr. Mills? No, that answers my question. All right. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any further questions tonight. I did want to thank staff. Um, I know that my my format isn't always the easiest, but you guys answered all 34 of my Excel question uh, uh, that I submitted to you. Um, every year I get a little bit less knowing the, the format of the budget. 
to council members, if you do have any other questions, I'm happy to help you answer any of them looking through the pages. Um, before we, we end on this agenda item tonight, I would like to ask if the mayor has any further comments or questions. Um, just basically what I said to Mr. Mills, uh, once I was going to thank the staff for their hard work once the budget get approved, uh, they haven't been approved yet, but the staff worked very hard and we gave council opportunity to uh, send their requests of things that you want in the budget. And, you know, so we do have a community promotion budget. As you can see, it's funded. The community promotion budget is funded for nonprofit organization. And so we'll look at those nonprofit organizations through the community promotion. We didn't put no line items in there, but we can use community promotion budget to help nonprofit organizations throughout the year. And so I will begin with the council. There is some additional money left over from the non community promotion budget. Um, not a lot of money, to, but you know, it could, I ask you, uh, what organizations, you know, we have the money I have left for that. And there are also be some other additional money once we um, do the final but different adjustments. But, you know, um, this is a, a lot of hard work here. That's why we ask you guys to uh, submit stuff to us in advance. You know, normally the process works for next year. Um, use January um, to around February. Um, the mayor was sent out, um, myself, I'm the mayor now, but I was sent a request. <laughs> You know, what do you want to see in the budget? It's a it's a request. Uh, I don't mean it's going to get put in the budget, but we will look at it and add it, you know, see what we can do because we got to pay the bills first, things of that nature. But community promotion, we do put money into community promotion to help nonprofit organizations out. Once again, that's not any direct line item to say money is going to go directly to this organization, but there are grants and things of that nature that we have through uh, Youth Service Bureau. And so we just have to uh, advertise those things as well. So I just want to say, say that piece. And, uh, once again, I would thank the staff for our, our final meeting once the budget get approved. Again, I think it, uh, I can say that, but thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If council has any further questions, please feel free to submit those to staff for answer before the next uh, meeting. Um, Mr. Mr. President, excuse me. Yes, Mr. I, I, yeah, I, I, um, I left off that um, I just wanted to thank the um, director seller and, um, and the department heads because um, Going through the budget, I mean, it was it was almost it was very good and very enlightening to sit down and have the lines, uh, you know, the line by line. I'm mean, literally line by line going through this budget and and working out the budget. And almost, um, you know, it's it's exciting to work to to uh, to uh, approve the budget and um, and just you know and find these numbers. And I really really appreciate the education, the knowledge, the time that you all took. And um I, I um, you know, I'm I'm I was just it, it almost felt like leading up to Ramadan for fasting. It's just it it was it's great and I really appreciate it. Y'all did a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Ordinance number twenty twenty six will be placed on the agenda for the next in person Marin City Council meeting on May 28th at 6 p.m. This is a Tuesday because of the holiday for Memorial Day on the 27th. We will be meeting on a Tuesday. This will be on the agenda for second public hearing and possible action. With no further business to come before the Marin City Council, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>